Hey everybody, uh, Bill Diet here. Uh, this is basically like a follow-up to uh, the resin printer, the Spark Maker FHD printer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the final settings I came up with. I've gotten some good prints finally. You can see a print here on the build plate right here. Um, that is a Game of Thrones direwolf ring. Uh, I was just proving out my settings here to make sure that it was repeatable that I could print more than one. So there's one on the build plate, here's one here on this finger, and here's another one here. So I have three of them printed now. Uh, and this, this is castable resin. So when I go to, uh, to do my casting later, uh, this will be the, be the parts that I'll use for casting. Uh, what they mean by castable resin is that when you put it into what they call an investment, which is like a plaster, but it's a high temperature plaster, uh, you can turn up the temperature to a point and the resin, or the, the resin here will burn out. And it burns out cleanly. It leaves no residue behind. So that way you have a nice clean mold so that when you pour, in my case, I'm pouring sil I'll be pouring silver, it will pull that silver in into all the areas that used to be where the plastic is and not have any weird deformations because some residue was left behind from uh, the burnout process. So uh, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, this is the build plate. I've got gloves on because I'll be handling the build plate here to remove that part. I'm actually going to start printing another one, but before I start printing another one, because you guys won't, won't need to see it, because you won't even see anything until it gets high enough up to see anything, and that's hours away. So I'm not going to sit here and make a, a video of this thing that takes forever to print. Uh, this is probably like, I don't know, five or six hours to print this thing. You know, it's just a small ring. It's just, that's the nature of the LCD display slash uh, LED UV lights that they're using. They take a certain period of time to, uh, well, to, to print, you know, to cure the resin. <clears throat> the lasers, lasers cure a little faster. I don't know if they're any faster in print time or not because I don't have anything to compare that to. Unless somebody else is going to go on Thingiverse and download this Dire Wolf ring and print it using like a... Uh, what's the other printer? Uh, the My Piaptoli Moi. Moi or whatever you want to call it. Um, if they want to try it on that and see if it prints any faster. I did not scale this. This ring only fits my little finger for me but you know I'm just trying to do a cast and, and you know learn the casting process really so I picked something that had a, a fair amount of detail in the model so that I could get something uh, reasonable to, uh, to show the casting process. Anyway I'm going to turn off the cameras off of myself and off of the model so that you can see my desktop on my computer <coughs> and you can see here I have here I have the ring uh, and you can see the support material for that ring which you see upside down on the build plate um, so what settings did I use I'll go into settings here and you can and you'll be able to oops, wrong thing sorry I'll go into settings here so that you can see what I'm doing and you see uh, here is my this is just a standard setting these, are, these ones you really don't care about what you care about is this one right no sorry this one right here which is print um, when I printed the little baby Groot, which I displayed, the hand was broken off. What happened was, across the entire build plate surface, the resin had hardened on it. And that hand was hardened in there too. And because the hand was so small, and the arm is fairly thin, it actually snapped off when I was removing it from the, from the build plate. Because, of all the, because the whole thing was hardened. So that was uh, done at 100 second exposure time, which caused... So I reduced it down to 80 seconds exposure on the uh, bottom, and in this case my bottom layer count is three, so three times it'll do 80 seconds. And the rest of the time it'll do uh, what is it, 11 seconds after that. So I don't remember how many, how many things there were in that, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, these were the final settings, so you can, re you can go through them all and you can copy those if you have a spark maker. 
which I know someone on Twitter said they had one and they were looking at trying it out. And I told them they could just follow the videos and they'd be able to do follow what I did. Uh, hopefully, I have all the information saved for them. If they have any questions, they're welcome to <coughs> contact me directly. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter. Uh, I'm usually on there every day, so you'll I, <coughs> you know DM me if you're if you're following me. And I'm I'm typically people that are following me that are in the 3D print community. I follow them back, so you can DM me, and I should be able to see your message, and I will respond back and give you an answer. Or if I don't have it right away, I may not always have the answer with me when I'm at work, but when I'm at home, uh, I will get the answer and I will get back to you with with the answer for how to make the spark maker work. Um, so that's my settings, and this is where we are. And you know, this is the typical thing here. Uh, you, on the spark maker, you just unscrew this knob here. I'm sorry, I'll show you. Go back to camera here, and I'll show you. Turn my cameras back on again. So on the spark maker, you undo this knob on top right here, and that loosens it, and you can pull this build plate out. There's resin on top. So what I tend to do is I have a plastic spatula, because I don't want to scratch up anything. So I use this plastic spatula, and I scrape off some of the resin to try and get off the majority of it. As I go over to take this over to my other space that I have, where I will remove this on, remove the part onto some paper into a cup for actually I'll put it right into a cup and put alcohol in it to, to rinse off the the residue from the print process and uh, we'll go from that okay so I got pretty much most of that off as best as I can and Turn the camera around so you can see. Let me turn this camera here around. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're looking right at me while I'm doing this. This is my knob on this tripod. And I'll bring the camera closer. So we can see what we're doing here. And hopefully we can get the... So here's the build plate. My messy workspace here. Uh, I always clean up usually when I do a video, but I haven't cleaned up obviously. Uh, so here's the part on the build plate right here. Um, so I use my plastic spatula because I don't want to scratch the build plate. And I just pop it off and pops off fairly fairly easily. I pop my spatula. So now I got popped off the build plate. I use paper towels under it to catch any of the red uh, resin residue. I'm going to put the build plate back on the printer. All you do is slide it back on and turn the knob to lock it in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another one so that I have hopefully have plenty of the rings available for doing my casting so if I have a failure I have another one to try and I'll keep trying until I have make a successful cast. Um, I think I was very close last time I tried to cast but my vacuum pump failed to work and so it didn't pull the, the uh, molten silver into the mold. So hopefully I will I'll make sure my vacuum works correctly this next time I do it so that I can avoid that kind of issue again in the future. Definitely don't want to have that happen again. And I'm starting another print here. And put the cover back on the printer. Okay, so now we've got the part here. Uh, you can see it looks wet, shiny. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. I might be out of focus, in fact. Uh, take off one of my gloves here. And I may be out of focus, but I can't really see things. So I'm looking one way. I'm looking away from the monitor, and I can't really see what it's doing here. Getting it closer here. Uh, 
people fell. I'm blind. Look how focused it was there. I don't know, that was, that was close to me. Um, anyway, so here it is. It's, it's now off the build plate. You can still sell support materials on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this plastic cup here that I've been using. Put that in. Obviously, here's my used alcohol. Um, so you can see it's pink because of the because of cleaning parts. I'm going to pour that in. And I'll wash it around a little. Make sure it's getting fully covered. And I'll let that sit for like <coughs> 10 or 15 minutes and let it clean off all the residue. And then I'll pull it out and remove the supports. And then I'll have uh, ring number three. Uh, so here's number one and number two already. Number three's in the in the cleaning and then number four is being printed now so i think that pretty well covers everything about that i can give you about the spark maker <coughs> um, after i get a couple more rings printed i'm going to uh, clean up the printer and give it back to my co-worker so that uh, he can do whatever he wants to do um, so all right, thank you for following along on this. Uh, good luck. Hopefully, uh, everybody who's got a spark maker or who has back spark maker uh, will enjoy the video. And, uh, hopefully, success to everybody who tries it. Uh, you notice my one camera is kind of the colors off. I don't know why, but that it was a a fairly cheap uh, camera. Um, this should be pink. These should be red. <coughs> As you can see, I'll show you the difference here. There's the arm of a, of a baby Groot in the same resin. It's red. I'll grab one of the rings here and I'll bring it over and you can see it's red. It's not orange. So I tried to adjust the color on that camera, but it didn't adjust. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, that's where we are. Good luck. Thank you, and I'll talk to you all later.